top story on urban debate. Cash-trapped airline SpiceJet hit another air pocket today. It will not be allowed to operate 50% of its flights for at least another month. Now, the DGCS says it is taking abundant caution after a series of mid-air incidents on spice jet planes. Now, operating heavy losses already, it has sent 80% of its senior pilots on leave for three months. The question is, is spice jet the only problem child of the aviation sector? If that is the case, why is that? And importantly, why is it that a sector growing as fast as aviation doesn't see a single airline make a profit? Uh, we're going to understand all of that from our guests who are joining us this evening. I'm going to thank all of them. Uh, we have Captain Amit Singh. He's the founder of Safety Matters Foundation. Uh, he's joining us. Uh, he's, he's been a pilot. Parvez Damania is an aviation expert. And Jitendra Bhargav uh, retired from Air India. Parvez Damani, I'm going to come to you. Let's just specifically spend some time on SpiceJet because SpiceJet is the one that has been hitting headlines for the last three months. What exactly is the problem with SpiceJet? When it comes to being cash-trapped, well, no airline in India is making a profit. What is SpiceJet doing so wrong? What has gone so horribly wrong for SpiceJet? Mr. Damnia, can you hear me? Okay. I think, all right. I think what we'll do is, Mr. Damnia is just about joining us on the broadcast. I don't think we've had an opportunity to fix his frame. Uh, so that ex that's exactly what we'll do. Mr. Da we'll let Mr. Damnia fix his frame and then possibly uh, go to him. Uh, but Jitendra Bhargav, would you want to come in here? You know, we want to talk about uh, the larger issue of why airlines in India don't make a profit, despite the fact that aviation is the fastest growing uh, sector in this country and, in fact, across the world. But as specific to SpiceJet, why has the story gone so horribly wrong for them? You cannot take the SpiceJet issue without looking at the total aviation industry in India. Huh. What we have witnessed right from the time the privatizers, private airlines were allowed to start operating in 1993, three out of every four airlines that have come up have collapsed. Now, earlier we could say, okay, there were people who did not have requisite experience, they were new to the industry, they did not have a business model, and therefore they pulled it. But what we witnessed in the last 10 years after Kingfisher were basically the legacy carriers were collapsing because the low cost airlines were taking away their market to lower fares. But now what we are witnessing is yet another phase. Competition amongst the low-cost airlines, which today command 83% of the total domestic market operations. Now, when you have this kind of a problem, you are not going to make, you're not making money. And the worst thing that the airline industry has done is they have for far too long, in order to keep the market simulated, been offering fares which have been below the cost of producing a seat which means from the word go, you start selling, you are losing money. The revenue that you earn on per kilometer of passenger flown at times is even lesser than an auto rickshaw in Mumbai. Now, when you have no money, you, no, you just want to lure passengers and get fill up your seats. SpiceJet, let us not forget, commands the highest occupancy factor. 84% of the seats on a SpiceJet flight are sold. Unlike any other airline, everybody tra trails SpiceJet as far as the occupancy factor is concerned. But clearly, if you are not getting the requisite fare revenue per seat, you're going to lose money. Then you've got to get into the history. SpiceJet at times was making money. They were steadily growing. But when Jet Avis collapsed in 2019, Ajay Singh went about on an aircraft acquisition spree. A large number of Jet Airways aircraft were taken. Then came the 737 MAX issue. So there were issues that came up. And now what we have, unfortunately, is high ATF prices, rupee depreciating vis-a-vis -vis dollar, because bulk of the costs of an airline industry are denominated in dollars, lease rentals. And then came, of course, the DGCA order in July that you can't operate more than 50% of your scheduled approved capacity, which means keeping the aircraft on ground, paying the staff, and that is what has led to SpiceJet laying off 80 pilots yesterday. Now, what does it do? An 80 pilot for three months. When DGCA says for one month we are suspending 50% of your operations, now clearly SpiceJet knows it better than DGCA. 
that they will be not they will not be in a position to put back all the aircraft in operation utilize the entire sanctioned flights that they have and therefore the pilots have been put on three months three months layoff now what we need to understand is can indian aviation survive the tragedy now as if you keep adding capacity but fares do not go commensurate with the cost you naturally will lose money i know a lot of media people have already started saying the fares are already higher than what they were last year for getting the simple thing yes they are relatively higher as compared to the past but are these fares good enough to compensate for the increased costs of operating a flight on or sustaining an airline operation the answer is no every airline including indigo as i said earlier loses money 10 crores a day is a huge sum of money so you either say we will not bother about stimulation of market we will not chase passengers at the cost of profitability we will sustain our operations so that we are economically viable and then of course the element of the high taxation that the airline industry has not only sales tax on the atf service tax etc now there are a whole lot of taxes because when a passenger buys a ticket he believes erroneously that this is the money that is going to an airline whereas the reality is that more than 30% of that money is not going to an airline it goes to airport it goes to the government it goes as taxes for the cisf security costs at the airport etc so where can airline make money and spicejet has compounded its own problems mm, okay. now you cannot say that look we not going to be flying let's not forget that the coming days our festival days you have the shera diwali vacation when the fly- airlines are operating 100% occupancy factor at very high fares so in spice jet is going to lose out on it and Now, why also- did spice jet not act and take the two month period that dgc had given them in july to put the house in order clearly indicates that the problems are much deeper than what we can sense from outside there are financial issues on hand for them and the problem is much deeper and not just for spice jet but look at the numbers that we are often given you know i've already said that aviation is one of the largest growing fastest growing sectors in india uh, in the lok sabha this year this is what jyotiraditya sindhya has projected for the uh, for the country's civil aviation sector look at the numbers here uh, captain amit kumar uh, he said that we'll have 1200 planes with 40 crore air travelers with by 2027 and 220 airports by 2030 in fact in march 220 airports were promised till 2025 essentially if you look at all the numbers that the government gives us uh, you know uh, the picture is very rosy you say look at you know you have, you have you have so many people who are flying okay the numbers right now are not at pre covid levels but it are get, they are getting there the numbers are pretty decent right now there are so many airports that are coming up in the country uh, 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 this is a dichotomy then right it's an industry that is growing is growing very fast the number of passengers projected to grow is very fast as well and yet you have something like a spice jet in deep deep crisis where 80 pilots will be sitting home for the next 3 months and uh, where where no airline is making a profit yeah captain singh can you hear me yeah okay that question you, yeah. was for you yes please uh, i missed out a bit of it so i'll try to guess it so we need a relook we need to relook at the aviation policy the 2016 uh, aviation policy because the market has completely changed the demographic <clears throat> the players uh, the airline industry is uh, a differentiated uh, oligopolistic market wherein uh, we have substitutes within the industry and we have uh, substitutes outside the industry so within the industry we have full service and low cost carriers now as uh, mr bhargav said 83% is controlled by low cost but the aviation policy is not uh, tuned to their requirements we don't have true low cost or pure low cost airlines we have hybrid airlines because the overheads are so high uh, for example uh, the security the bcas which is in charge of security will mandate certain personnel which will be dedicated only for security they cannot do anything else no other roles 
Uh, similarly, DGCA mandates certain other requirements. So the overheads and uh, the mandatory requirements are so high that uh, the airlines cannot make true profits or cannot be uh, true low cost. We don't have true low cost airports in India to cater for the requirements of the 83% low cost carriers so that uh, they can have better margins. In 2013, a policy was passed wherein fuel could be directly imported. Uh, there would be a set up 76% uh, owned by airport authority and the oil companies and uh, the rest by the airlines. That was the equity share. Uh, in order to save about 8 to 10% of taxes, uh, the fuel could have been directly imported, but uh, for reasons best known to the government, uh, even though the policy was approved, uh, but it was not implemented. So there is always uh, room for improvement, and that is why there is a need to relook at the aviation policy uh, in order to uh, let the uh, airlines govern their own uh, internal, uh, the way they want to uh, kind of uh, reallocate the resources, not be mandated by the government. So there is too much of uh, interference or control by the government, even uh, after the uh, deregulation or the open sky policies. Uh, open sky policies are basically to help the passengers uh, open and free competition, increase competition, and help uh, the airlines, or rather promote uh, the airlines. If you look at the traffic, the tourists' traffic is almost about 58% uh, as per IATA, a contribution to aviation, because maximum people travel by air. In India, the tourist industry is suffering because the numbers are declining rapidly. Uh, Pre-COVID levels 2018-19, the growth was only 4 to 5%, whereas other smaller countries, the growth is phenomenal. Now, India, the levels, you would be surprised the highest number of people who come to India from the foreign countries, the number number one is Bangladesh. 25 lakh people came in 2019-20, uh, rather 2018-19, uh, about 5 lakhs in 20. So that amounts for about 14% of inflow. And uh, most of them travel by land and about 14% airports. 83% say they come for tourism and rest 14% medical and others business. So I don't know, uh, there is a need to revive the okay. industry or the tourism industry. In 1970s, when oh. the, uh, the program was initiated 1990s for open sky policy, it was basically because of the lack of input from the tourism sector, hmm. which is a major contributor. And uh, the private airlines were introduced. Now, again, the the whole system needs to be relooked. Okay. Whether it is functioning properly or not. Has the aviation sector hit turbulence? Mr. Damni, every time we try and come to you, somehow we leave, uh, somehow the connection fails us. I believe the connection has failed us again as well. Can I ask my producer? Yeah, that's absolutely true. Uh, uh, Mr. Damni, can you hear me? Today your connection is giving us a lot of trouble. Yeah. Uh, I can hear you, but I can hear it's, it's, it's like your connection is a bit like the aviation sector, flying into turbulence every now and then. <laughs> very weak. Very, very weak. Very weak. Okay. So here's the thing, you know, uh, with, with what Mr. Bhargav no. has said and what Captain Namit Singh has said, the question is why will, no. you know, if it's, no. if, if it's a losing battle, why will new yeah. airlines come into play? For example, Akasa. No, see, I'll tell you something. It's a very fast-growing industry. There's a huge potential. India is a huge market. And uh, I think it's one of the fastest markets in the world. Growing. Uh, till COVID, it was doing very, very well. Now, what has happened? The COVID has hit the aviation industry very bad. Not only just the airlines. Okay, I think we've lost the connection. <laughs> I think we've lost the connection. Uh, maybe we should just stop trying. Uh, Mr. Bhargav, would you step in here? The fact is that if everyone is making a loss and, and if aviation is a losing battle, then why would new players like Akasa come in? Everyone believes the other airline has been making mistakes. 
They're not understanding the psyche of the Indian market. Take Tony Fernandez, for example, a highly successful operator of Air Asia. Came to India, could he make money in Indian market? Indian market is peculiar. Cost sensitivity is very high. Costs are very high. Now, with the result, you do not make money. As I said, Kingfisher Jet were both quality airlines. But could they ever make profit? The answer is no. Now, when you go on to compete, intense competition among the low-cost airline, the same thing goes. Now, Akasa Airline, you just made a mention of, in the first 21 days of their operations, after they started operating, 53% has been the occupancy factor. Mm. They placed their fares 6 to 8% lower than the prevailing fares of that time. But what happened soon thereafter? Indigo dropped their fares and matched Akasa Airline. Now, 53% occupancy factor for a new airline, brand new aircraft, advertising as a quality airline, yet they could not lure passengers. Indian market is price sensitive, fare sensitive. They will only go where the fares are very low and you have the advantage of multiple flight operations on a daily basis. You can't have just two flights in a day, one flight get canceled, you get stranded, all those kind of things matter. So it is basically, if you look up the phase from 93 onwards, people came in to operate or started airlines who had no understanding of the airline industry. They came up because it was a glamorous industry. The glamour was attached to it. They folded within no time. Then, of course, the government was also reckless in granting licenses at that time and said, OK, anybody coming and companies, they came up overnight and they were given licenses. But for the collapse of sustainable airlines, the airline which has sustained operation 25 years like Jet Airways, something seriously is wrong with our industry. Now, you will have any number of applicants and said, OK, I want to come into the market. The question is, you have the initial investment of, say, 200 crores or 300 crores. You burn it out. Of course, Akasa would not have foreseen that when they commence operation, rupee would have depreciated significantly. ATF prices would have risen. The market would not be growing post the COVID. You see, let's not forget that the pre-COVID level is still eluding us. Hmm. We are still 15, 17% lower than what we had of number of passengers flying per day on the pre-COVID period. Now, the population has also gone up. The people are traveling. The lockdown conditions have been withdrawn. Everything is normal. Now, Ms. Captain Ajit Singh was making a mention, Amit Singh was making a mention of, you know, tourism. Tourism is growing in, in, by leaps and bounds at the current position. It's difficult to get a place of seat on tourism desti destination flights. Now, tourism is growing because the hotel industry is attracting passengers. There yeah. are various kinds of advertising campaign, but we are nowhere close to what it should have been. Okay. International travel, yes, the Russia-Ukraine war has impacted. Mm. The number of flights being operated from west to India and back have been, have been reduced because several airlines don't want to take a detour and fly. So with the result, the fares are exceptionally high. But okay. Indian market, fares are not high. Airlines are not recovering money. I've often you know, stated uh, airlines are accused of fleecing passengers, but if they were fleecing, they would have been making money. And the reality is none of the airlines are currently are making, making money, money that, because the, the costs are truth. simply too high. It's the bitter truth and it's also the irony, I would say. Uh, you know, when you talk about India being a large market, when you talk about the increase you're seeing in the number of passengers, the number of airports, etc., and then you see the fact that airlines are not making money. Uh, you know, Ajay Singh had famously once said, as I wrap this chat, he's saying people in India will spend 5,000 rupees for a night out or on restaurant bills, but they do not want to pay 5,000 rupees for a flight ticket. Is that the problem, possibly? Uh, we leave it there for the moment, gentlemen. Thank you very much. This has been a good, enlightening chat for us to understand where the aviation sector is going and why no airline, despite the rosy picture that is projected, makes a profit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed to both of you.